So, I was born and raised in a Christian home. When I was four years old, I decided to ask Christ to come into my heart. A couple years ago, I really ended up struggling with self-image, bullies, and basically just feeling ignored. During that, I ended up struggling with my faith. That only lasted a couple of months, but it was still very hard. After that, I ended up realizing I needed to really rely on God. I could go to youth and I would end up coming home in tears. And I'm not very good at that kind of thing. So when <laughs> I would go home and then come back in tears, I would just think about everything that people would say to me. Um, fat, ugly, not good enough. And I started saying it to myself and I became my worst enemy. Um, and I still sometimes struggle with that, but I learned that I really needed to trust in God during that time. And God has really changed my heart now, and I've become a lot more grateful for what I have, like my family, friends, and basically just Him in general. Um, and now He's provided me a really good group of friends that push me towards God and hold me accountable to what I am trying to do. Um, a verse that I always turn to when I get very anxious and stuff is Psalm 139, 13 to 14. For you formed my inward parts, you knit me together in my mother's room. I praise you for I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. Wonderful are your works, my soul knows it very well. And it's just, I find that very helpful when I'm struggling with that. And so I, that's just kind of why I decided to get baptized today. When you stand in a court of law, they ask you to testify and solemnly swear that every part of the testimony you share will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. But in a world where everyone's quote-unquote truth has become different, how can you know and be sure of what's really true? How can you be sure that the story I'm about to share with you isn't just something fabricated to entertain you with plot twists and hills and valleys? Well, there's a singular thread in my story that stays constant throughout. It existed before it began, and it will exist after it ends. It's the story that keeps all stories alive which are interconnected to it, and his name is Jesus. Life apart from God feels similar to try to carry around a backpack with an unfixable hole in the bottom of it. It can't hold anything. As soon as you fill it up, it gets empty again, and it cannot fulfill its purpose. And that was me. I was a broken backpack with an unfixable, God-sized hole in the bottom of me. A broken backpack doesn't seem like the worst problem of someone could have, but the problem arises when you realize that this backpack is not just carrying your books or your laptop. This backpack, which was my life, carried my heart, my future, and most importantly, my eternity all of which were on sale for the world and the devil because they weren't fully sold out for Jesus. My mother, a Catholic immigrant from Eastern Europe, and my dad, a Coptic Orthodox immigrant from Sudan, were a part of nothing short from a miracle from God himself when they both decided to accept the true gospel and experience the transformative healing power of Jesus, which occurred early on in my life as a child. That was the first time Jesus told me he wanted a personal relationship with me too. And you know, I wish the story could have stopped there and I lived the perfect Christian life and that's how I came to be saved, but it's not. Little did I know how many mistakes and wrong turns I would make before finally coming back to tell him, yes, I want that too. In my university years, I drifted from God a lot. I'd become so distracted with my own plans, ambitions and desires that I forgot God's role in all of it. I was in a perfect place for the devil to tempt me with new experiences, friends and situations that deteriorated my faith over time and because my foundation in Christ was not strong, when the wind and the storm came, I was shaken like a house built on sand. I got involved in the drinking and partying culture at my university I was attending in an effort to be seen as cool and valuable to the social circles I was a part of. This led me to poor decision making, poor self image, and heavy burdens of guilt and shame which weighed me down deeper and deeper into the pit that I was digging. After living life by my playbook for the first three years of university, the final push into the pit was a devastating heartbreak. I knew God was there but he seems so far away now. His solution seemed impossible and my situation seemed unfixable. 
This backpack I was carrying no longer had a hole, but was on the verge of being torn apart. Feeling as good as nothing, I hit rock bottom. And when you hit rock bottom, the beautiful paradox of such a low moment like this is that the only way to look is up. That's when I found the light because the only direction I could look amidst the darkness was Jesus. Like it says in Psalm 107, that's why he broke them with hard labor. They fell and no one was there to help them. The only way to run was Jesus because he is the way. As it says in verse 14 of the same Psalm, he led them from the darkness and the deepest gloom and he snapped their chains. Through the process of healing from this heartbreak, the spirit got to work in purifying and cleansing my heart. After I'd made myself numb to its instruction for so long, I got sick and tired of wearing the lukewarm blanket of Christianity. I'd always called myself a Christian and I wore that blanket whenever it got cold and I used it to cover my eyes like a little child when something scared me. But as soon as the morning came, I threw it off like I never needed it. I felt conviction in places in my life where I used to view things as relatively normal. I was healed from things I didn't even know I needed healing from. Then God decided to speak to me again. After 10 years of waiting on me, hoping I would come home, talk about the true definition of love is patient, love is kind. He then asked me the same question he asked that 10 year old girl 10 years ago when she saw both of her parents get baptized and their lives become forever changed because of one man named Jesus. He said, do you still want that relationship with me? Finally, I said yes, and he snapped my chains. One man's trash is another man's treasure, I thought to myself. I realized that this world had and will continue to kick me to the curb like trash, whether I'm for it or I'm against it. Luckily, when I was someone's trash sitting on the side of the street, the king of the universe saw me in that alleyway, and he called me his. He called me accepted, his child, his masterpiece, chosen, precious, loved, free. I was his treasure that he picked up, restored from damage, and redeemed. Like it says in Psalm 113, verse 7, he lifts the poor from the dust and the needy from the garbage dump. After accepting God's invitation, I began the process of fully surrendering my life to Jesus, even if that meant entering my fourth year of university very uncomfortably, which meant refusing to live and condone the sinful lifestyle that had held me captive and shackled for so long. The thought of letting go of all I had built for myself felt life-shattering at first, but God needed to remove the old to make room for what he had destined for me even before the foundation of the world was laid. As the word tells us, anyone who belongs to Christ has become a new person. The old life is gone and a new life has begun. As I intentionally made room for God and cleared all the clutter I'd held onto for so long in my life, surrendering every dream, every hope, every desire, he showed up like a dream home renovator and began to design my quote unquote room and life into one more beautiful than I could have ever pictured for myself. He blessed me with a diverse community of sisters in Christ who run this race alongside me for Jesus every day. He gave me a spirit of courageousness to share the name of Jesus with friends in my life who barely even knew I was a Christian. And he called me into leadership ministry at my university where I now lead a discipleship group and Bible study for Queen students weekly. Most surprisingly, the very song God used to build my testimony called Make Room was the exact same song he used to reawaken the gift for worship he placed inside me long ago. Exactly one month after accepting God's call to worship, he placed me in the position of worship leader at a weekly worship night called The Well at my university, where I had the privilege to help lead students in that very song just two weeks ago, where I witnessed a new generation rise up as they too felt called to make room for Jesus in their own lives. And the best part is, he's just getting started. The story may have started with me, but it ends with him. The truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. So why do I want to be baptized? Well, I already started living my life for Jesus the moment I came to surrender, but now, like Kai said, I want the world to know. We can't change this world. It's not our job. But if we can place the light which lives inside of us in a place that is visible for those around us to see, there might be a single fighting chance that they will look long enough and see Jesus and be changed. God chose to call me Esther, which means star. But it wasn't until the day I heard one of my professors explain why stars twinkle when I finally understood my purpose. The stars in the night sky twinkle because of the effects of the atmosphere which surrounds them. As I surround myself with Jesus and make room for him to overtake my entire atmosphere, he has given me the gift to be his bright light, his star that shines amidst the darkness. But I'm not the hero of my own story. Jesus already filled that role and he is the thread of truth that holds it all together. So now I dedicate this life to telling his story for as long as this, as this earthly life lasts and into eternity.